Today is an interesting day. Um, we reached the end of this eight limb series that we started um, the first Monday in January. So we've been on this journey for almost a complete six months, moving through the different limbs of yoga, the different both linear and nonlinear pathways through this system, starting with the yamas and the niyamas, the things you should do and shouldn't do talking about asana and preparing the body, talking about pranayama, preparing your energy, pratyahara, which of course is control and moderation of the senses. And then the last few weeks you spent in the conversation experiential around meditation itself. And so in yoga, there are three stages and those three stages just happen to be the last three limbs. And the first stage we did two weeks ago, dharana, is the only one out of the three that you can actually practice. The other two, last week's limb, dhyana, and this week's samadhi, have to arise spontaneously. So all that we can actually do in practice when it comes to the eight limbs is getting ourselves in the most, uh, most ready state that we possibly can to allow the last two limbs to spontaneously arrive. And that's why we can't practice samadhi. I have been practicing yoga for 15 years. I've reached, like I've glimpsed, <laughs> just like open the window a little bit on samadhi, maybe just a few times in that entire time. Now I know that probably makes it sound daunting, but there are ways to understand it beyond just direct experiential, though that's amazing. Um, I think that in having a gentle goal of reaching it someday, it's good to know what it is and what it isn't. And so this is not dissociating. It's not just checking out. Um, it's not delusions of grandeur. <laughs> um, and it might be a state that takes a while to actually prepare yourself for. And so samadhi is absorption. So if you're thinking about the three stages of meditation where this falls on the spectrum of it, in dharana, the first stage, you are concentrating on an object. In dhyana, if you're able to hold that concentration for about 12-ish breaths, the thing you're focusing on starts to give you something back. So if you're fo focusing on light, you become lighter. That's just a very plain example. Now, if you're able to hold that dual conversation with the object of meditation, if you're able to hold that for about 12 breaths unbroken, you may spontaneously arrive in the state of samadhi. And samadhi is when there's no longer a light that you're focusing on, there's no longer you, you become one. And this is the delusion or the disillusionment of separation. So one of the biggest, one of the first lies um, of the universe is that we're separate. You know, we come into life, we're basically ripped from our mothers and we, from then on have some issues to deal with around separation. And samadhi is where that illusion of separation completely dissolves. Now, because we are dissolving from the binary, good, bad, right, and wrong, it can feel like we die a little bit, not in a, a esoteric or even a existential death, but more like you get into a state of absorption and your mind thinks your body dies. And so you have like this convulsion <laughs> and it pulls you out of the state. And so you have to condition yourself over time to be okay going into that kind of a state. Now, how can we practice this? How can I make this a, a, a class that we can actually do right where we're at? Well, it's to get more comfortable with that exact idea and to allow yourself to be with that which is greater than you. And there are many names for that and depends on really your personal philosophy and how you want to define that. Um, for me, in this case, the way that I'm gonna talk about it is through connecting to intuition. And so many of you have done a class with me before where we do Sahaja Yoga, where we try to just move in an intuitive way. Tonight's class will be very much the same. And I'll bring in some other concepts as well. And we'll try to get the body right. We'll try to get the energy right. And at the end, 
we will try to do a meditation that just helps us connect a little bit deeper. The last thing I'll mention before we practice is that don't have any expectations here. Don't expect that you're going to reach dharna. Like don't expect you're going to be able to hold concentration, let alone dhyana. And definitely don't expect that you'll reach samadhi. The crux here is, or the catch, is that if you try to reach samadhi, you'll, you never will because you have to let go completely of all desire in order to reach it. So if, you, if your goal is to reach it, you're stuck in your ego state and you will never, you'll never get past that. So it gets a bit big here, it gets a bit meta. <laughs> uh, just be open, that's another way to think about it, all right? So I have talked enough, we will go ahead and get started. Please sit comfortably and we'll get centered. Sitting tall, let your eyes close, take a deep breath in and out. And as you settle in, just notice what you brought into today's practice with you. Maybe it's something in your body, maybe your body hurts or feels sore or tight somewhere. Energetically, you might feel hyper, or tired, exhausted, restless. Then there's everything that has to do with the mind. Residue from your day, residue from your weekend. Maybe concern for the future, worry. Maybe there are some emotions that are just present with you. Now, as you are in this moment, just see if you can accept all that that this is how you are in this moment. And even if there are parts of you that wish it were a different state that you were in, accept that this is where you're at right now. Because this is the only place you can start tonight. You can't start in the past or future. You can't start in a fantasy. You have to start here with this reality. You might even have compassion for yourself in this moment, just as you are. And knowing that even if you can't really feel compassion for yourself, that you can have compassion for the fact that you can't feel compassion for yourself. And that our practice tonight will help you to connect to the true self, the part of you that can hold compassion regardless of what's happening in your internal and external environments. It's a part of you that's always calm, always compassionate, curious, courageous, confident. It's with that goal, if we have to have a goal, it's with that goal of connecting to true self. Then we'll chant the sound of Om three times. Deep breath in. Oh. Oh. Bring your palms to your heart, again, bowing to yourself as you are in this moment. And all parts of you, your body, your energy, different movements of the mind. Connecting to something deeper, 
something truer. You're ready with the palms together. Take the heated palms over your eyes, brushing back over the top of your head, down your neck, and bringing yourself back to your space. Okay, so go ahead and just extend your legs forward for a moment. You can have your hands behind you to help uh, support you, and just patter the backs of the legs against the floor. Just go for it. And breathe. <laughs> patter, 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 patter. Three, two, and one. And relax. Feeling the stimulation, the tingling in the legs and feet. Just helping to wake those up a little bit because we're going to come back to a seat. <laughs> So I'll give you two options for this one tonight. You can come back to cross legs just like you were a moment ago, or if you'd like to, you can come to sit on your heels. Now, if you're sitting on your heels, we're going to be here for about four to five minutes or so, and I want to make sure that you're comfortable. So if you are, you could take a block between your feet and prop yourself on that. That'll take some of the pressure out of the uh, ankles and out of the knees. So be comfortable. And to help us just start to clear the mind and clear the energetic state, nothing's better than for that than pranayama. And the pranayama we'll do tonight is bastrika. Bastrika is the bellows breath. So if you think about an actual bellows, it helps to stoke a fire. We're doing the same thing here, except the fire is our internal spiritual fire. Now, you have practiced Kapalabhati with me, which is the forced exhale. <laughs> Bastrika is a forced inhale and exhale, which makes you both slow down the breath and really making sure it's in the belly. So it looks like this. Okay, a little harder to do than um, Kapalabhati. But again, you're forcing the inhale, you're forcing the exhale, and we're starting to stoke this deep, deep fire. Okay, so we're going to practice this three times for about a minute each. And if you try to go too fast, you'll lose steam and you'll have to stop. So start slow and pick up the pace as you feel like you're ready. Okay, so sitting tall, whether in your cross legs or whether you're kneeling. And if you want to take a hand on the belly just to make sure the breath stays down there, you can. and try to keep the lower back stable. So make sure it's not flapping around, keep it pretty still. Okay, when you're ready, feel the belly expand, inhale, and exhale, snap it back. It's a forced exhale. Inhale, exhale, and keep going. Three, two, and one. Take a deep breath in. Exhale slowly. Feel light in the brain, fire at the navel, energy in your spine, and a clearing of the lungs. Allow the breath to be grounded back into the navel, back into the abdomen. And we'll continue another round. Again, breathing to the belly, forced to inhale and to exhale. Please begin. 
Three, two, and one, deep breath in, exhale. Feel energy of the navel, clearing of the mind, energy or enlivenment of the spine, the energy moving upward, clearing of the lungs, space around the heart. You might notice other sensation in the body, you might feel some, maybe some cramping at the abdomen or shortness of breath. We're gonna to try to both acknowledge and move past those discomforts. One more round, deep breath in to begin. Three, two, and one, deep breath in. Slowly exhale. And this time be with the clearing of the mind. Other sensation may be happening, but just notice the clearing of the mind. I feel like a tingling in the nostrils pulsing at the brain center. And again, other sensation is happening. We're aware of that. We're allowing our consciousness to rest at the spaciousness in the mind, as spacious as you're able to make it. And in this spaciousness, we begin to connect to intuition and a sense of inner guidance. We don't have to really worry about where that's coming from, but I do want you to trust it. Know that it has your best intentions at heart. And as we move through this practice, you can continue to let it guide you. Let it offer you a deeper breath. Maybe moving the neck around a little bit, flexing the spine a bit if it's become stiff, just beginning to bring yourself back to the body, but from this state of awareness. Right. 
Let the eyes open if you haven't already. And take your time as you transition to hands and knees. Table pose. Being mindful as you do. Good. All right. So with your next inhale, look forward. With your exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, float back down onto hands and knees. Exhale back to downward facing dog. Let's do that about three or four more times. Floating down, inhale. Extending back, downward dog, exhale. Inviting some length into the legs, especially if they're feeling a little tight after sitting for a bit. And also creating some movement of the spine. Warming that up a little bit. Good. Let's do one more. And then landing in downward facing dog, take a moment to walk it out. Taking deep breaths here while you do so. And then we'll continue our warm up with Don Decrea. So, bringing the legs into a static position with your next inhale, come into plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga, one inch from the floor. Press the arms straight, take the shoulders back, upward facing dog. And exhale, pull back into downward facing dog. Let's keep going. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Keep going. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Keep it up. <laughs> Warming up the body, the arms, the shoulders, the spine, the core. Let's do three more. And every time you exhale, chant Om. Oh. 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 One more round. Oh. Oh. Good. Inhale, float down onto hands and knees. Exhale, child's pose. Make it active, child. So lift the palms, fingertips on the ground, like you're clawing the floor. Walk the fingertips forward a couple of inches and then think about sinking the hips toward the heels, creating this big extension through the, the entire body, the spine, the arms, and even down to the lower back. Go ahead, release the palms down. And then inhale, come up to hands and knees. And again, downward facing dog. In downward facing dog, lift the right leg into the air. With your exhale, step the foot forward, take the back knee to the floor and come up for a crescent lunge. As you exhale, bring the hands down and step back to downward facing dog. Left leg lifts and step. Knee down and come up. Hands down and step back. And keep going. Right leg and step and up and back. Left leg and step and up and back. Good, lift the right leg up and step it through. And this time start to move with your intuition. So that at first might just be keep doing what we were doing, but really start to tune into what your body is really needing in this moment. And so I'll start to name some things that you could do if you wanted to. 
course, this is not a limiting experience, you could keep the back knee raised and come into high lunges. That's one thing you could do. You could make this a twisting lunge, raising one hand into the air. You could, you could extend the front leg and the back leg at the same time and pull the toes toward you for a hamstring stretch, stretching the backs of the legs. If you are working asymmetrically, which I assume you are, if you're doing the lunge stuff, um, do try to make sure that you balance out what you do. So if you do something on one side, do it on the other. And then start to break the mold a little bit after a while. Maybe you want to do a Donda Kriya in between lunges or after a few. Maybe there's another warm up that you would like to do. Your body's asking for something. Maybe instead of <laughs> Maybe instead of doing up dog, you want to play around with cobra for a bit, head, chest, and legs lifting. Just keep moving. And we'll go for about another minute and a half or so with this intuitive, intuitively led experience. Just feel in, let your body guide you. It doesn't really have to look like yoga at certain points. Maybe there's a side lunge in there for you or a side plank in there for you. If you do hold the pose, just know why you're holding the pose. If it's because you're not sure what to do, then just keep moving. You can always go back to the original flow. But if you're holding a pose because it feels good and you wanna hold the pose, go ahead and do that too. About 30 more seconds for our warm up. And take your time and over the next 15 seconds or so, find yourself in child's pose. So once you land in child's pose, just feel sensation for a moment. And also reflect on that experience, what you might've found hard about it, what felt good about it. <laughs> Maybe you found yourself getting stuck. Maybe you found some judgmental voices in your head saying, oh, you're doing that wrong or you don't know what you're doing. You do, by the way, know what you're doing. <laughs> you might be able to clearly tell when you were being led by something more intuitive and when you were doing what you maybe felt like you should do. Taking another breath here in child's pose. And then go ahead and come on up to hands and knees, pressing back into downward facing dog. And then walking the hands back to meet your feet coming into Uttanasana. Palms to shins halfway up. Exhale, fold, and then sweep the arms out to the side, come all the way up, inhale, and palms to your heart. Good, good. All right, so we're starting to warm up a little bit, um, warm up the body a bit. I had to go actually go turn a fan on. I'm really getting warm in here. <laughs> we're gonna do arm swings next. So it's a three-part inhale to the nose, one powerful exhale out of the mouth, and We'll do the body drop version. So just to demo, demo it really quickly for you. It's inhale, arms up, inhale back, inhale up, exhale, drop, bend the knees, swing up for the next round, okay? So when you're ready, feet about hip width apart, 
Arms hanging loose at your sides, connecting to your breath. And when you're ready, inhale, arms up, back, up, exhale, drop. Inhale, 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 exhale. <sighs> Inhaling through the nose, powerful exhale out of the mouth, clear the respiratory system. <sighs> Swing it out. And try to find a steady pace and keep going with that pace. Don't worry about trying to speed up and slow down. I'd rather you find something that you can maintain for the entire two-ish minutes that we'll be doing this exercise. Swing it out. Now keep going, we're gonna go about, about one more minute. I want you to start paying attention to when you are hyper identifying with the experience. So when you feel the body, when you feel the sweat, when you feel the, that exasperation of the breath. And then when you just feel yourself watching it all happen. When we do this repetitive movement intentionally, there's this witnessing aspect that can start to creep in. It becomes, more natural, it feels. <laughs> Be more intuitive. It's not that these sensations in the body aren't happening. You're just choosing whether they get your full attention or not. You know what you're doing is good for you. We're clearing the respiratory system. We're moving lymphatic fluid throughout your body, helping to boost your immune system. We're raising your energy. Loosen up the shoulders, we're strengthening the back. We're doing all that good stuff. We know it's good for us. Step outside of that perspective of good, bad, right, and wrong. Just notice what is, what's there. We're gonna go for about 20 more seconds. You're almost done. Swing it out. Ten more seconds. Go for three, two, last one, and come back to standing. Get still once you're done, arms by your sides, close the eyes. Now the breath might keep going pretty quickly. I mean, you might be even out of breath for a moment. That's completely fine. And there might be the parts of you that identify with the experience of being hard, it being energetic, it being good or bad or otherwise. Then be aware of the aspect of yourself that can just witness that you have opinions about this experience. That doesn't put it on a spectrum. That can just witness and hold compassion for all of the experiences that you might be having, even the ones that may feel a bit contradictory. Good. And then go ahead and bring your awareness on back. All right, so we're gonna do another exercise that may challenge you a little bit. And again, when we do these challenging exercises, it's not so much that we're trying to be advanced yogis in the body, <laughs> but we're trying to know that we're being challenged without being controlled by it without be having an aversion to it or attachment to it or whatever the reaction might be that gets us caught in limited perspectives, all right? So just know that that's, that's what we're trying to do here. <laughs> and you're always welcome to take care of yourself if something is just too much, back off of it. But I'm gonna have you take a wide stance on your yoga mat, please. And feel free to watch me do this once or twice. 
So I'm going to take my arms out to the side, and we're going to be doing these twists down to the floor. So if you need a block at either foot to help this along, you can do that too. And I'll take a deep breath in. I'll slightly bend my left knee. I'll bring my right hand down in front of the left foot, and then finishing the exhale, rolling the top shoulder back and maybe even looking up. And then I'll inhale, come back up, and then I'll exhale, bend the right knee, left hand down, twist, 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 to inhale, come up for the next round. And so we'll start just moving from one side to the other, one side to the other, okay? Now, if the floor does feel far away, bring a block underneath where your hand is gonna land, all right? You ready? <laughs> take the arms out to the side, take a deep breath in. Exhale, go ahead and bring the right hand down in front of the left foot, roll the top shoulder back, and then inhale, come all the way up. And then exhale, bring the left hand down in front of the right foot, roll the top shoulder back, inhale up, and then just keep moving at your own pace. Twisting from side to side. Exhale, twisting, inhale, unwind. Exhale, twisting, inhale, unwind. Just keep going. Notice what the mind starts doing when it starts associating with it or disassociating with it. It's almost like you're just watching yourself practice. You know their sensation, you know you're feeling things. The same that you're detached, you're very much connected to what's happening. It's just you're not letting it be the totality of your awareness. But there's a broader perspective, more, more perspective to be had. Let's keep going just a little bit longer. Do one more time on each side. Next time you unwind from the right side, go ahead and release the arms, close the eyes, and feel. Notice the parts of you that feel affected, physical sensation, or just the mind having a relationship to this practice. Good, and then go ahead and hold your hands behind your back, interlace the fingers, squeeze the shoulder blades together, lift the arms off the back. Now bend the knees just a little bit, hinge at the hips and fold forward over the legs, taking the arms overhead. Breathe. And then go ahead and release the hands to the floor. Lift yourself up halfway, extending the spine forward. Exhale, fold down again. Sweep the arms out to the side of the strong back, lift all the way up and palms to your heart. Good. So we're gonna step the feet together, feel sensation again for just a moment. Good. So we're going to step into our sun salutation now. And just like our warm up earlier, we'll start with a regular flow. We'll do it about two or three times. Let's kind of feel how it feels. And after a while, I'll just let you go. And you can keep doing the flow 
you can add postures to it. You can even start to just kind of break away from it completely. We're gonna spend quite a bit of time in this portion of the class. And I'll coach you along the way, kind of helping you to break out of like the, the limitations that might feel set for you. The only thing I, only limitation I give you really is safety. You know, don't do something that you can't do. <laughs> and don't do something that, uh, you know, you might, you might not have a safe container around you for. Like if you're around a lot of sharp objects, like don't do headstands, you might fall, okay? So stepping to the top of your mat, feet about hip width apart, palms to your heart. Again, I'll guide you through the first couple of rounds. Find your breath. And then aware of the one who's aware of the breath. With your next inhale, sweep the arms down and up. Exhale, bend the knees, chair prep, chair pose. Stay for the exhale. Inhale, straighten the knees. Exhale, swan dive, fold forward and down. Press palms to shins, come halfway up, inhale. Exhale, fold down, step your right foot way back, turn the back foot flat to the floor, toes out to the side. Bend the front knee strong, we're gonna come into warrior two. So sweep the right arm forward, let it pinwheel you up and sink into the pose. Good, take the right hand onto the right leg behind you, lift the left arm up and back, reverse warrior. And then exhale, swim all the way forward, step back to downward facing dog, it will move through Danda Kriya. Plank, Chaturanga, upward facing, and downward facing dog. Once you're back in down dog, lift the right leg up and step it through, help it forward. Back foot turns flat to the floor, toes out to the side, bend the right knee, left arm reaches forward and pulls you up into warrior two on this side. Good, left hand on the leg behind you, right arm lifts up and back, reverse warrior. Then exhale, swim all the way forward, step forward. Palms to shins, halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms out to the side with a strong back all the way up and palms to the heart. Let's do that again. Inhale, sweep the arms down and up. Exhale, chair prep, chair pose. Stay for the exhale. Inhale, lift and exhale, fold. Palms to shins. And down, step the left foot back. Back foot flat to the floor, bend the left or the right knee. Come on up for warrior two on this side. Good, left hand down, right arm up and back, reverse. And exhale, swim forward, downward facing dog. Danda Kriya. Good, landing back and down dog with the left leg up this time, step it through. Back foot flat to the floor, bend the left knee, warrior two, come on up. Right hand down, left arm up and back, inhale. And then exhale, swim forward, step forward. Palms to shins, exhale, fold. Sweep the arms out to the side, come all the way up, inhale. And palms to the heart. Good, inhale, sweep up, chair prep chair, lift and fold, halfway, right foot, warrior two, reverse warrior, downward facing dog, Danda Kriya. right leg, and step, warrior two, reverse it, step forward, palms to shins, and down, inhale all the way up, palms to the heart, sweep it up, inhale, chair prep and let go. Find your practice now. 
If you're not sure what to do, keep moving through this flow as we've been doing. I'll keep demonstrating it for about a one more round or so. And you can use it as the, as the template or the skeleton for what you'll do later. And you might feel like you wanna switch it up a bit after a while. It's okay to keep with what you know. And after a while, you can sink into what you feel, what you know you need. That more intuitive movement. Not doing something because I tell you to, but because you know that it's the thing to do. Keep going, keep moving. This is one of my favorite ways to tap into intuition is just to keep moving. Don't let fear stop you in this moment. There's nothing to be afraid of. We're just exploring. Don't let the critical thoughts take over. You can acknowledge that you have critical thoughts that like you think you should be doing something a certain way or you might feel like you're not a good yogi because you can't think of what to do. If you can't think of what to do, return to the original flow. The chair pose, the warrior twos, the danda kriyas. But you might wanna throw in a side warrior, reaching the back arm over. You might wanna do that. You might not wanna do warrior two at all. You might wanna do warrior one. You might wanna do a high lunge. You might not want to do any lunges at all, <laughs> any warriors or lunges. Maybe that's just not in your practice tonight. You don't want to do it. Maybe instead of up dog, you want to do uh, cobra pose or locust pose. If you've been moving with warrior one, you can come down over the leg and feel the stretch. You could do triangle pose. You can come into a wide-legged forward fold here. You could throw goddess pose into the mix. There's so much that you could do. You just have to allow that unfiltered, creative, energetic, intuitive flow to start moving for you. And this is a trusting process. And that's what we're doing here is we're building that trust between you and that which can guide you. So just keep moving, just keep going. And if you stop in a pose, know why you're stopping. If you're doing it because this is a pose that feels good and I wanna stop in this pose because it feels good or it feels like I should be in this pose, like from an intuitive place, do it. If it's because you're kind of stuck, just go back to the original flow. Just keep moving, keep flowing, keep exploring. And at this point in our practice, we're pretty warmed up. So you can do quite a bit for your body. You can even, depending on how much space you have in your, in your space, you can even break away from your mat. You know, maybe you wanna go practice something at the wall. Maybe there's a, a stretch that doesn't even look like yoga that you wanna do. There's so much that can happen here. Keep exploring. Keep searching, keep being guided. Just try to stay connected to that flow. And you might go in and out of it. And you can be curious about that too. You can notice that as well. There are moments where you feel like really in the flow and there are moments where you feel pulled out of it. And that there's nothing wrong with either state. We're gonna go for about maybe another minute and a half. So you have plenty of time to explore here. Maybe you wanna do frog pose. <laughs> Maybe you wanna do a pigeon pose if you feel like your hips are warmed up enough. I'm just trying to think of all the poses you could do. There's quite a catalog of them. And I do name some like complex postures. There could also be simple postures that you wanna do instead. Maybe child's pose is what you need right now because you've been moving for a while. Maybe it's a standing forward fold. Again, it's okay to be still, just know why you're there. Don't do it to avoid the practice because that's easy to do. Try to stay engaged. 
And if you're working asymmetrically, meaning just doing one side of your body with something right now, you might want to start thinking about doing the other side. We got about 30 seconds left in this portion of our practice. So you can keep going even though you know the practice is about to end. It's easy to want to cap out early. Keep going. 15 more seconds. And when you do land, when you do feel finished, bring yourself into a standing forward fold. Just hang over the legs. A nice simple, or simpler I should say, stretch here. Symmetrical. More of a resting posture. The knees can be bent a little bit. And in this moment of stillness, you can again reflect, how was that for you? Did you notice any resistance? Were you able to be in a flow, just allowing yourself to be led? Were you confused at times? Frustrated? Did you want to quit? If you did stop a few times, that's okay. Just notice. And then be aware of the part of you that is doing all of the noticing. And then as you're aware of the part that is doing all the noticing, notice the awareness that you're observing from in this moment just a little bit removed from the mechanics of the mind and the world. Calmer, steadier, no matter what your inner or outer experience might be in this moment. Good. I'm taking a deeper, fuller breath. Slowly roll yourself all the way up to standing. Hmm. All right, great job. No matter how you feel you did in that one, just stepping into the practice is a great job. It's a good thing. You can't necessarily do it too wrong. <laughs> so we have a couple more postures to do as we start to cool down or wind down from some of the uh, heavier movement here. And yeah, I'm just making a decision here <laughs> as far as our sequence goes. We're gonna practice tree pose next. So have your feet stack underneath your hips and have the weight of the body evenly placed in both feet. And then take the weight of the body and just shift it over into your left leg. Feel the pelvis pull up on that side so that you're not collapsing there, but you're extending out of the leg. Keep the eyes focused to a single point and draw the right knee up toward your chest. Your hands can be on your hips, palms to the heart, whatever you'd like. Breathe. It's okay if you fall, just take your time coming back in, okay? And then place the right foot down, shift back to center, and then just go ahead and take it all the way over to the right foot. Again, lift up out of that leg, focus the eyes and pull the left knee up and breathe. Good, then place the left foot down, come back to center, and then shift back into the left leg and we're gonna take the practice just a few steps further. Again, if you fall, come back into it. So lifting the right knee up when you're ready. You're gonna take the right knee out to the side and place that foot on the inner thigh either above or below the knee, just don't push it right into the knee joint. And you could even reach down and hold on to that leg if you'd like to. And if the leg is able to stay there, you can just bring the palms to your heart. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Be the one who is watching yourself have the experience.
Good, go ahead and bring the right foot down, shift back to center. And take your time as you lean into the right side, left knee up. When you're ready, take it out to the side, bring the foot to the inner thigh or inner calf. Focus the eyes and breathe. Be the one who is watching yourself have the experience. Try not to get frustrated if you fall. Just re-engage. Good, all right, good job. Go ahead and carefully release. And just go ahead and come into a standing forward fold again. Hmm. And then from there, go ahead and transition into downward facing dog. Floating down onto hands and knees and child's pose. Right, so go ahead and roll yourself up to a seat for just a moment. I'll explain what's gonna happen next. So our class has been pretty much split into three parts, a warm up, doing the middle portion and then cooling down. And we've done Sahaja Yoga for the first two. Let's do it for the last one as well. And so we have time. I'd like you just to spend time bringing yourself back down. So you don't wanna do any postures that are too intense. And you wanna make sure that you throw maybe a back bend in there, like a bridge pose or a locust pose. You'll wanna throw a twist in there somewhere, like a lying twist or a seated twist. And We'll make sure to do a forward bend before we go into Shavasana. So listen to your body. You can even close your eyes for a moment to see like, what do I need before I rest? Now there may be parts of you that are like, I'm tired, I just wanna rest right now. <laughs> and that's completely valid. But we do need to counterpose from the work that we've done. So again, a, a back bend would be great. Bridge pose, locust pose, cobra. Bow pose if you if you feel really warmed up in your lower back. You may need a twist. And with the twist, just make sure you do both sides. And you can even throw a forward bend in there as well something symmetrical like knees to chest or butterfly, either seated or lying down. And if you're not sure what to do, which is a completely valid understanding, just try something, explore, see what you need. It might take some trial and error and that's completely fine. You might move in and out of these poses dynamically. You might hold these poses. If you are doing twists, just a reminder to do both sides as evenly as possible. We have about another minute or so in this exploration.
Now take your time, but over the next 20, 30 seconds or so, I'd like you to come into child's pose. And when you come into child's pose, make sure that your forehead is touching something. So if you're able to, you can bring it just all the way down to the floor. If the floor is feeling far away, you could bring a block underneath your forehead. Make sure the forehead is capped, that it's resting on something. One more breath here. And with your next inhale, please roll yourself up to a seat. <sighs> All right, great, great work. We're gonna come into Shavasana next, so please come to lay down. Make sure that you are comfortable, that you are supported, now you can rest here. So as you come to lay down, take a deep breath in and out. And just feel your body relax a bit deeper into the floor. Supported by your mat the floor, the building, the foundation, and the earth. All of it rising up to hold you. And begin the contemplation of what does it feel like to be effortless? What does it feel like to be effortless? Try to embody the answer. Don't worry about any intellectual answer. Try to feel it. Feel it in your body. Can you let go more? Feel it in your breath. Not forced. Feel it energetically. What does it mean to be effortless in your mind? Can you let go? Try. And when effort returns, let it go again. This time and every time.
Peace. 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 Go ahead and take a deeper, fuller breath. Making gentle movements in your body, bringing it back slowly, gently. And taking your time as you roll to your right. And coming on up to a seat. So sitting tall, make sure that you're sitting on something supportive. Let your arms relax down by your sides, your shoulders, down your back. Relax your hands. Soften your face and jaw. Become aware of the flow of breath in your nostrils. It's often cooler on inhale, warmer on exhale. And as you hold your awareness at the breath in the nostrils, I'd like you to engage Ujjayi Pranayama, the audible breath. So constricting the back of the throat slightly to make the breath audible. Now, once you have the breath audible, I'd like you to turn it down, make it barely perceptible, just a little bit of texture to the breath, if you will. A very quiet Ujjayi, just enough to feel it. Soft, quiet Ujjayi Pranayama. Aware of the breath in the nostrils. Aware of the breath streaming in. Aware of the breath streaming out. And after a while, the sensitivity of your awareness in the nostrils may heighten. Begin to see the breath moving through the nostrils as light moving through the nostrils. Keep the soft ujjayi. Light moving in, light moving out. And imagine that that light, as it comes in, is just gently touching the roof of the nostrils, the back. Creating a sensitivity to that spot. That point at the roof of the nostrils at the back.
And then let go of the visuals. Let go of the ujjayi. And become aware of that spot at the roof of the nostrils in the back. The one that the light has been touching. And you might feel that point pulsing. Let it pulse. It might have a spongy quality to it as well. And then let that sensation float upwards slowly to the brain center. Still pulsing, still spongy. And if you're able to bring it to the brain center, see it there and see that sensation transform into a bright light, a ball of light. Nothing else exists in your mind but this light. Hold your awareness at this light. Allow this light to absorb into your brain. Feel lighter, clearer. Feel yourself just a bit beyond the mundane, beyond the binary, the duality. Just a bit beyond feelings of suffering. That which can have compassion for all that it witnesses. And know that through the practice of yoga, you deepen the connection to this awareness. The Bhagavad Gita says that no time spent on the path is wasted. Every ounce of effort you give to your practice moves you forward, moves you closer and closer to the true self. Let this guide you, let this connect you. And through it, know that you are that which you seek, that there is no separation. Take your time. When you're ready, take a deeper breath. The palms together, 
and bow the chin to that light within you, that light beyond all sorrow, that true self. May all the work you do lead you to it. Namaste.